Since we're getting rain today, that helps us a lot, actually, for our next topic, which is spider mites. Spider mites do not like it when it's cool and wet. They thrive when it's hot and dry. And the main reason is there's a pathogen that will attack them. Uh, they'll get a fungus in the cooler and wetter conditions, and a lot of times spider mites die off. So in the northern part of the United States, where it is a little cooler, and especially in the wetter years, we don't typically have spider mite issues. But who knows, as we continue on this summer, maybe it will turn hot and dry for us in the northern part of the country, and we'll see some spider mites. When you talk hot and dry, there are a lot of yep. crops grown in our country in very arid areas, right. uh, places that get six inches of rainfall per year, maybe 12 inches of rainfall per year. And the crops are grown in a lot of cases with irrigation. In those systems, spider mites are a problem almost every year. And for the most part, insecticides don't really work well, on the mites. Yeah, but wait a second. You mentioned irrigation and we already said they don't like cool and wet. So when it's irrigated, there's at least slightly less chance for spider mites. When it's hot and dry, that's when it seems like it's the worst. But anyway, the whole thing is, the further south you go, so the longer growing season there is, obviously there are going to be more life cycles for any insect or any mite. And when we talk about spider mites, yes, they have developed resistance to some of the products that we can still use in the northern part of the country, like organophosphates, namely Lorsban, and some of the pyrethroid products like bifenthrin or Capture. Well, I, I want to be real cautious here when you say pyrethroids because many times I'll talk to farmers, especially in the upper Midwest, that are out there spraying for something else. And maybe they've got bean leaf beetles or soybean aphids or corn rootworm beetles or something like that. And all of a sudden, after they spray a pyrethroid, like a warrior or a silencer or something like that, that are great on those other pests, all of a sudden they have a mite flare up where there's way more spider mites than there were just a week ago. Well, what happened here? Well, when we're out there spraying one product, many times we can kill off beneficials or uh, other pests that feed on those spider mites. So you have to be real cautious when you're choosing products. So yeah, like Brian said, Lorsban or a bifenthrin might work well in certain areas of the country. In other areas, you have to use a specific miticide just to be sure. Yeah, so there are many products like Zeal, Oberon, Onager that people will use in other areas of the country. We don't have to, fortunately, but in other areas they do use these specific mite products. You can certainly talk to your agronomist about those. Well, the whole thing is though, what's the threshold? And that's what everybody kind of debates about because these things are so tiny, you can't go out to your field with a microscope and count, oh, Oh, I have 500 of these on my plant. Nobody's going to do that. So a lot of times you look at what stage is the crop in, especially when you get into the reproductive stages. The spider mites can be much more harmful. And then you look at how, what percent you have of leaf damage and things like that. But all I can tell you is this. When some of the products like for us, uh, Lorsban and Capture are down to 2 to $4 an acre, I'm pulling the trigger way earlier than what we ever used to. Well, and that, that's really the key. You have to run those economic numbers on your own farm and price things out because a lot of these crop protection products are coming down in price so, so quickly over the last few years that now things that used to cost $10 cost $2. And wow, I used to pull the trigger at this certain level. Now I can do it much sooner. All right, so once again, with spider mites, absolutely make sure you're scouting your field on a regular basis. These things can come on quick. A lot of times we don't see them in cooler, wetter climates but it's certainly possible. And make sure that you're using a product that will actually kill the mites because many of the insecticides today do not have mite control. And the good thing is you may not have to make an extra pass out in your field because you could mix your spider mite control right with your weed control when you're trying to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. <music>